The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, You fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, the season of Lent is a wonderful time of grace in which the Lord invites us to become righteous unlike those uh, that righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees that we heard about in the Gospel passage. It's good for us to reflect today on what Jesus meant by that, so that we can understand what we are aiming to do in the season of Lent. The scribes and Pharisees were the leaders, the religious leaders of that time, and surely for them righteousness was a matter of reputation. It was a matter of appearances. It was a matter about what others think about me. And that is a superficial kind of righteousness. Because under the appearance of religiosity, under the appearance of virtue, there was a lot of injustice being done, especially to the poor, those who had had a moment of weakness and had given in to sin. They had virtually no recourse to the mercy of God, to the freedom that was offered to them, even through the offering of sacrifices. Lepers, Samaritans, and many other groups of people were just excluded from society and from their connection to God by the kind of religion that the scribes and the Pharisees practiced, a virtue or a righteousness of appearances. And so, in the first reading of today, we hear about how God, in the Old Testament in itself, showed how truly just He was, lest the people of Israel should think, on one hand, that His mercy was to be understood as weakness, or permissiveness, or licentiousness, which just allowed people to do whatever they like. You do you, I do me, and we'll all be happy together. And another extreme, people would take God's justice to mean tyranny, so that if anyone had committed a fault, they were forever forsaken, abandoned by God. And that's why so beautifully the prophet Ezekiel speaks on, the, on, on behalf of God and says, Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, not rather that he should turn from his way and live? And so true righteousness at the level of conscience, when we are alone with God, is what God is concerned about. Are we really living in the sight of God, in the presence of God, in every moment of our lives? And if a righteous person suddenly decides to do something wrong, will God not demand of that person that that person changes their life? And if a person who is doing something wrong in their life and has a change of heart and wants to return back to the way of righteousness, will not God in His mercy 
open up the doors to that person to turn and make a change. And so this is the season of Lent that we are celebrating in, in these 40 days leading up to Easter, my dear brothers and sisters, that we should persevere in doing good and we should, if we have been entertaining our habitual sins, those sins that we are a little bit attached to, that we should let go of those and we should strive with all our heart, mind and strength with the help of God to change those areas of life that we really need change. The, the religion of the scribes and Pharisees was a religion of appearances. And so if you were attending the services, if you were making your offerings, you were giving your gifts at the temple, you were safe, at least in your mind, with God. But Jesus is asking those who come to the temple who, to offer a gift to examine whether they are at peace with themselves, with their brothers and sisters, or whether while they are offering their gifts at the temple, they are calling their own brother, their own sister, their own spouse, their own mother, their own father, fool. They are angry with them. They are, they are estranged from them. And they are not in peaceful terms, or all the while, while they are they're offering their gifts, they are doing injustice to those who are working under them. While they are offering their gifts, they are acting as tyrants to those who are serving them, or to their own spouse, or to their own children. They are treating them like dirt. This is not the kind of offering, this is not the kind of gift that pleases the Lord. And this is what Jesus is inviting us today through this gospel passage to do. We might be very religious, but how are we treating our neighbor? How are we treating our brothers and sisters? How are we treating our own spouse, our own uh, children, our own neighbors, our own co-parishioners perhaps? What are the words that we use with one another? Are we harboring anger and resentment in our lives? The season of Lent is a time for us to let go and let God once again to, to soften our hardened hearts, to fill our hardened hearts with His love and forgiveness. And on one hand, to return to Him and make the necessary changes in our lives to grow in virtue and also to foster reconciliation and peace with those we have unnecessarily and unjustly estranged ourselves from and perhaps done injustice to. Let us pray for the courage to make the necessary changes in our life in this season of Lent and may the Holy Spirit Grant us the grace to persevere in our Lenten journey towards Easter, where we will rise again with Christ to the newness of life in virtue, in joy, and in peace. Amen.